Hi, it's Steve here from A470RC Soaring. And uh, for those of you who've been watching my recent series on the JNH Aerospace Microbird of Time, uh, you'll have seen in those videos that I've been launching the model using a high start. And uh, a few people have, a few viewers, should I say, have been asking how I made that high start. And it's pretty simple. So I started off by purchasing a pack of 1 8 inch FAI flight rubber. Now, this is the stuff um, that is used to power rubber powered model airplanes. Okay, uh, the flight rubber usually comes in like uh, 1 16th and 1 8th and various, various sizes of rubber. This pack is five meters. It says three sixteenth inch. Now, three sixteenth inch means nothing to me. Here in the UK, we're all metric these days. Uh, all I know, it's probably about, roughly about three mil, um, something like that. But it's one eighth, one eighth inch FAI flight rubber. And this is the stuff you want. And this is available quite easily here in the UK from the Vintage Model Company. Um, and uh, I will put a link in the description down below here to the Vintage Model Company. It is also um, available uh, at uh, Free Flight Supplies here in the UK. Um, and I think there's quite a number of, of outlets in the USA um, J and H Aerospace, where I bought the, the Microbird of Time from, they also supply the rubber. So uh, you you could go to them. You could order order some of that whilst um, uh, you're ordering your Microbird of Time. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's that's the rubber, and it was very simple to put together. Basically, all I did was. It comes in, in one length, it's not a loop. It comes in one length, five meters, and I tied, made a loop tying an, an overhand knot. And I just slid onto there a little bit of, of heat shrink tubing. Now, it, actually, I didn't quite do that right. That was my last bit of heat shrink tubing uh, that was big enough to fit on, on there. So I really, when I make my next one, uh, it'll all be, um, I'll have a bit of heat shrink tubing all around there just to give it a bit more uh, strength. Um, and this is the end that is going to be used at your stake end. Okay, now whatever you're going to use as, as a stake. Now, there isn't a great deal of pressure on this high start. This isn't like my other high start, which I have for, for the bigger models, which has got like 30 meters of thick silicon tubing, followed by 90 meters of, of heavy um, fishing line, you know, it, and uses one of those curly uh, dog spikes, dog lead spikes to, to hold it down. It, it doesn't need a great deal. Um, a good quality uh, angled tent peg, heavy duty tent peg will do. I just used a very large screwdriver. I mean, the screwdriver was probably about a foot long. And I used that. And where I've been flying it from, the ground has been very firm. Now, if the ground was very soft, I would probably use something a bit more substantial, but the ground has been very firm. So I haven't had a problem. And that screwdriver or stake has been going in at a, about a 45 degree angle as well. So, uh, and that goes around around your stake so it's secured and not going to come off okay so that's the last thing you want is for this elastic to come off okay so it's just a simple overhand knot but before I tied the knot uh, and before I did anything else with the rubber I actually lubricated it just as you would uh, in a rubber powered model and for that I use this stuff so this is from Dow Corning and it's Molly Coat 33 medium it's um this it says it, it's an extreme low temperature grease it's it's you probably can't see this it's a 
thick white paste. It's a silicon grease basically. And uh, you only need a tiny little bit. And I put it inside a clear plastic bag, just a, just a little drop of it. Put my rubber in there, give it a good old rub around, get it coated, and that's done. But it's just going to prolong the life of your rubber. Okay, and I did put a little bit on the knot before I tied the knot um, because tying when you tie a knot in in a rubber, then the rubber is going to um, bite into itself and it, it could damage the rubber, and that's the last thing you want. Okay, so I've got five meters of this rubber, and then at the other end, I slid the rubber through a fishing swivel with a, uh, a snap link type connector. Okay, and then I tied another double overhand knot to secure that. So I needed to connect the next bit of line to the elastic and I didn't want to tie it directly to the elastic because I thought it would probably cut into it. So this way I've been able to create a link. You don't need a particularly big swivel for this. This is micro stuff we're talking about. You know, when you're pulling your model back on the line, you're not going to be pulling a great deal of pressure. Okay, so the rubber has gone through the swivel, okay? And then another double overhand knot to secure it there. And then attached to that snap link. So if I wanted a, a, another length, uh, make up another length of line, which was longer or shorter, for instance, I can just unclip that from the swivel, attach the line to it, and, I, and it's job done. I'm not having to mess around at the field. I, I can have it done in seconds. So attached to that snap swivel is some braided fishing line. And as you can see, it's very thin, but very strong. There's no stretch in this stuff. This is 15 pound breaking strain. I, I use this uh, when I go um, shore fishing. When I'm away on my holidays and I've got my rod, you know, and uh, so this is the stuff I use. And I found it's perfectly strong enough. You, you're not going to break this with the micro bird of time. I promise you, this is pretty strong stuff. Okay. And I've got 30 meters, which is about 100 feet. I think 30.5 meters is 100 feet, roughly that. Okay. And then that goes to the end bit. So I've tied on a white ribbon. Um, actually, I could probably do with getting something of brighter color, um, a nice high vis yellow or orange would, would be better because there have been some times when I've, <laughs> I've struggled to find it. You know, after the model's landed and I've gone, right, where, where has it gone? And I've actually struggled to find it. So um, I'll probably look to see if I can find some high-vis material. Maybe I've got an old high-vis vest or something I can, I can cut up and use. Uh, and then that goes to, I tied a loop uh, in the end of that, and that goes to a small uh, split ring. Uh, this one is probably about... Uh, it's bigger than half an inch. Uh, so, I, and I'd say it's probably about eight mil diameter, something like that. You don't need a really big, uh, heavy split ring. This is a very light split ring. Um, and that goes to the tow hook. And basically that is it. Um, I've had a, a lot of launches on this, not had any problems at all. I've got a spare length of rubber in here, which I always take with me, ready to go, just in case the rubber was to snap on me because it's not going to last forever. Uh, but I have to say that I haven't been stretching it to its full extent. I haven't been pulling it until it's like straining. I haven't felt I've really needed to. So, Maybe that's something I should do 
let me know if, if you think that I should be pulling that a lot harder. If you've been watching the videos, what, what do you think? There is another question I wanted to ask you guys, and that is, as I said, I've got um, five meters of rubber and uh, 30 meters of line. Could I have a, a longer length of line? How much more line could I actually add? Could I add another 20 meters possibly? Or another 10 meters um, to give me that little bit more height? Now the field I'm flying from, I can use my full size high start on there for the bigger gliders, but I tend not to because there are other users on the field and the field isn't that big. But this, uh, this high start for this small plane is ideal. I can, I can get away with it nice and easy. But could I get away with adding a bit more line to, uh, to this high start? I say another 20 meters. That would be that would be quite nice uh, if I could. Ten meters, I uh, that that'd be be good also. But let me uh, let me hear from you guys. Put put a comment down below and uh, let me know if if you think that that would be okay for me to do. And um, I can uh, I can try that uh, sometime in the near future, hopefully. So anyway, that's it. Um, just let me tell you that next week's video will be out on Monday. I'm back on the slope uh, with my one of my flying buddies, Nick. Um, and then the video after that in two weeks time, that's another one on the, on the slope. That's already, already filmed, edited, in the can as they say. Okay, so um, yeah, until then, Take care, happy flying.